Hey, what's up? This is an update on my car. I have a fourth cylinder misfire and the uh, compression is low. It's about 60. And I was thinking, you know what? What could I have done to uh, to make the engine last longer? But <laughs> you, you know, when you when you put a supercharger on it, um, I got just below like 50,000 miles on it. And um, I think that it's a cost of doing business, obviously. I knew that. You know this would greatly reduce the the longevity of my engine and it's a trade-off everything in life is a trade-off and I'm, i know that if i did leave the car stock i wouldn't have any problems with it essentially that it would be really reliable it would just be boring that's all and the, this is on a different one where you guys could get this it's like uh it's an absorbent to try and absorb stuff from the uh, moisture from your car i also put one in the trunk as well so my my car has been i haven't really been driving it for the past month and i've been asking the shop to source an engine they they were looking at a used engine and then something was broke on it so the shop pretty much recommended that i just get a brand new engine and then my problem is is um, I would have to break in the new engine, so it's prob it's most likely getting set back to stock. I would have to drive it around for 600 miles. I could keep it stock, but I most likely won't. And after I break it in, probably going to take like, you know, a couple days, a week on, or maybe a week to, to drive those miles. That I would have to bring the car back in to, to have the supercharger put on. And it's more work, it's, it's more money on my end, it's more money than I wanted to spend and it's kind of deja vu where I probably shouldn't have bought this car to begin with in all honesty because if, if I invested the money, you know, back in 2019-2020, I would be sad already. So you, you have to ask yourself if, you know, you, you want to drive a Mazda Miata now or do you want like a McLaren later on in life? But, a lot, a lot of lesson learned, so... I think that I invested a good amount of money into this car and, and I'm attached to it even though it doesn't necessarily align with my my mental health goals because I, I actually went to a Toyota dealership and I was asking them about that Prius because it would force me to drive slower that's the only reason why I would want that car even though it's mad boring it does have new technology and it's a decent car it's like a normal car and the markup is about 8k and I, I was doing some research online and they said that they they just add add stuff onto the car to make the price go up so that the bank covers the the loan amount and the interest rate is about six to nine percent chase qualified me for six percent and then the dealership they showed me like 730 or something I think it's BS in my opinion because I'm I don't remember signing anything for them to check my credit score and also they're, they're trying to sell me a car that I didn't want with the features that I didn't want and it's like hey, if you're gonna try and charge me 40 grand for a base Prius uh, you should give me what I want essentially I'm the customer so it, it, it just doesn't make any sense in my opinion but I'm, I'm not super desperate on, I'm, I just haven't been driving this car and my battery's been uh, getting low. So I, I bought a charger from Harbor Freight and then I, I hooked it up earlier today. I'm, I can show you the connectors and then I also have like a, a power strip that has a battery in it. So most likely, you know, well, once a week I, I could hook it up to that where, without like running actual an extension cord out outside to, to my car so this is this is what the connectors look like I pretty much put positive to positive negative to negative and then I could show you the unit a little later but my my battery it's at about 13.3 uh, amps when it's off well after I fully charged it yeah this has to stay off for now So if you guys are thinking about boosting your car, just keep in mind that uh, your, your engine, 
it w the longevity would be greatly reduced and I, I pretty much pushed push this car as fast as it could go I didn't do like clutch dumps or anything like that but I, I drive it around like a go-kart so it's not something that you do to your car so that you could drive it around like a grandma so your car you're gonna have fun with it understand the risks and uh, determine whether or not it's worth it for you to do I just hit about 89.5 thousand miles and for the most part I'm pretty happy with this car it's one of the most fun fun cars I've ever had I would say the, the funnest car I've ever driven was a 93 RX-7 it was modified a little bit with that apex and on from our intercooler short ram intake it was cool well then this car is a close second and the, the dealer he also asked me if i wanted to uh to look into that toyota 86 that car it's a cool car but i wouldn't take it over a miata and May, maybe if if both of the cars were stock, I still wouldn't take it over a Miata because, you know, there, there's a convertible. That it's just way more fun in my opinion. And obviously, if you modified that '86, that it, it, it would the Miata wouldn't be able to compete in my opinion. But the the, the supercharger is not fun. It's a lot more work and a, a way way more money. So to, to it, it's cool. Well, most likely because I, I bought this car in August the, I'm, I would have to smog it next year so I'll, I'll cross that bridge when I have to most likely the, the stock headers could go back on and then I could try and uh, I could try to smog it with a supercharger well we'll see if it passes or if it doesn't pass so my, my options are just keep a stock or I could put the stock headers back on and run it with the supercharger and the stock exhaust or I could keep it the way it currently is so either way it would be a lot of money in my opinion yeah let me know if you guys have any questions please like share and subscribe comment down below and let me know uh, what content that you want me to create and if you have any questions that uh, I'll be more than happy to answer them if you can educate me on certain things, then I would love that as well. One of my pet peeves about this car is the windshield's so thin that and any little damage will cause you, you know, little chips here and there, little cracks here and there. So this is the charger that I got from Harbor Freight. And it has these little connectors. This is my battery strip and it has a backup battery. I'm not sure on the capacity, but it could do about half an hour. So this one, I'll put it on the 200. It's not reading. So with the engine running, it's a uh, 13.7, and when it, the engine isn't on, it's at 13. So after I after I took it off of uh, the the outlet, it was 13.4, and it's dropping 12.7, 12.6. I wonder what it will go down to. 12.5. Is this normal? Let me know. Essentially, you don't want it to go below 12, though. It should be good, though.